Hello and welcome back to this lecture. In this lecture, we will say introduction to ARM. So what is ARM? ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machine. ARM is an architecture based on which various companies fabricate their microcontrollers or microprocessor. ARM is the industry's leading provider of embedded risk microprocessor solution. Advanced Risk Machine was established as a joint venture between Acon, Apple and VLSI in November 1990. The ARM is a family of microcontroller developed by the different manufacturer such as ST Microelectronics, Motorola and so on. The company licenses its high performance, low cost, power efficient risk processors, peripherals and system chip design to leading international electronics companies. The ARM microcontroller architecture comes with different versions such as ARM version 1, version 2 etc. And each version has its own advantages and disadvantages. ARM provides comprehensive support required in development of a complete ecosystem architecture profile. Although ARM has developed a variety of their core version, but the latest and the most widely used is ARM Cortex. So the architecture profile is Cortex A. A stands for application specific, designed to handle complex applications such as high end embedded operating system. Example Symbian, Linux, and Windows embedded. Require the highest processing power, virtual memory system, support with memory management units, and a secure program execution environment. Sample products of Cortex A is high end mobile phones and electronic wallets for financial transactions. Next is Cortex R. R stands for real time. Real time high performance processors targeted primarily at high end of real time application. High end braking system hard drive controllers and other applications in which high power and reliability is required are the best example of Cortex-R. Low latency is the most important feature of a real-time application. Cortex-M. This is the microcontroller specific core that we are interested in. Our internship will revolve all around this core that is Cortex-M. Processors targeting low cost application with high processing efficiency, low power consumption, low interrupt latency and ease of use. Critical and industrial control applications including real time control system. Now comes to Cortex M core. ARM Cortex M core provide various cores from the basic to advanced level controller starting with Cortex M0. M0 is the low cost and low area chip. Low area means the features are embedded in a very small packages. Moving on to M0 plus it has the lowest power of outstanding energy efficiency. That means the feature of Cortex M0 is imported but with outstanding energy efficiency. Moving on to Cortex M3, the performance efficiency and feature rich connectivity. That means the com combined feature of M0 and M0 plus is imported to M3 with an additional features that is connectivity. Next is Cortex M4, the M0, M0 plus and M3. This combined feature is imported to Cortex M4 with additional features like digital signal control, processor with DSP, accelerated SIMD and floating point units. Cortex M4 is general target for low cost application as well as a medium performance related industrial application. Next is ARM Cortex M7. This is the core with maximum performance using DSC, flexible memory system, cache and double end signal precising floating point. As we can see, as we grow on Cortex M core, the features are added. So as we increase the core, the speed and performance of the controller also enhances. Now what are the features of ARM Cortex M controllers? These features can be considered as advantages of Cortex over traditional controllers. The very first is DSP extension. The controllers of ARM Cortex M core have inbuilt digital signal processing extension that help to handle single and dual cycle instruction. Next is SWD or JTAG. These controllers can be debugged using serial wire as well as traditional JTAG support. Floating point unit. The floating point computational functionality of a controller is enhanced using this 
floating point unit interrupt latency interrupt latency is the time required to move from the general routine to the interrupt service routine and in case of cortex m core controllers this latency is very low that means it can quickly switch from the user code to the interrupt routine next is cystic timers these are the heartbeat of controllers this timer provide clock which is independent of microcontrollers next is nvic nvic stand for nested vector interrupt controller this is the part of controller that is responsible for handling the various interrupts and their interrupt service routine to instruction set this feature helps high code density execution with speed optimization high speed bus architecture high speed data transfer between memory and peripherals are possible using the high speed bus architecture and the most popular bus architecture used in arm cortex m is memory protection unit mpo is the feature to secure the region within a controller so that restrict so that restricted access can be granted to the authenticated user the most important features of this arm cortex m controllers developed by st as code compatibility that means the code designed in any controller can be migrated to higher or lower end controller without any modification the only thing that we need to modify is the library as well as startup file. now let's explore stm32 hardware environment st offers a variety of hardware development codes for prototyping as well as development the very first is stm32 nucleo these are the kits for flexible prototyping this kit have optimum features that are offered by arm and cortex m controllers next is discovery kits Discovery kits are used for key feature prototyping. That is, it has the features add on to the nuclear board with optimum features. Next is evaluation board. These are the board with full feature evaluation so that a user can perform any peripheral test and deploy. Next is STM32 Nucleo expansion. These are the boards developed by ST for add on functionality because nucleo kit are used only for flexible prototyping and they have only the optimum features provided by arm and if we would like to add some other features to this controllers then we need to use expansion boards available third party boards these are the boards developed by third party for exploring the stm32 environment and they can be from full evaluation to open hardware let's discuss the stm32 software environment stm32 cube stm32 cube is the software ecosystem for the complete package of a particular family as we discussed the cortex m controller core that is m0 m0 plus m3 m4 m7 for those core we have a package containing drivers associated functions middleware libraries and example codes for particular families so if we are using m0 then there is stm32 cube f0 that is a complete software ecosystem for m0 controllers next is stm32 cubemx cubemx is a graphical tool that is used to configure the mcu and generate a basic code structure so that user can start to add his or her code instantly cubemx helps to import the drivers and libraries within no time and creating the complete code structure hassle free next is stm32 cube ide this is the coding platform used for stm32 controllers it is provided by st free of course and available to all cortex m core controllers and the last one is stm32 cube programmer this is the all in one software that is used to configure the hardware board like erasing memory sector upgrading the debugger and many more hardware related options so these are the four major softwares that we will be going to download and install in the upcoming lectures that's all for the session thank you